FEMA camp list in Houston and surrounding areas. Also, what about the claims of the supposed ex-police officer that was homeless that said he wasn't going to a Salvation Army or the Russian Winds homeless shelter because they were caught killing people red-handed? Well, I can't find a Russian Winds homeless shelter, but I will share something with you very interesting in a moment. And what you're looking at right now is the Harris County Recovery Network. Like, where do people go when they ask for FEMA assistance? Do they actually have FEMA camps? Do they have FEMA shelters? What are they? Well, I'm going to share with you an article where 53,000 people were given assistance to hotels and motels. So it's not like there's just one location where everybody's going to go to get rounded up and then herd it off. So with that said, if you hang with me here until the end of the show, it's not going to be a very long podcast, you'll see a very interesting article about the homeless population in Houston. So here's a list. Once again, the shelter list updates. You can see the NRG Center. These are FEMA camps or FEMA shelters, you know, camp, shelter, whatever. George R. Brown Convention Center, the Lakewood Church, and that's at Southwest Freeway, the NRG Center off of NRG Parkway. You want to take Gate 10 at Kirby and McNee. Now, I would like to talk to somebody that's actually been to one of these. Please give us some updates. I'm sure you've got a phone. You've taken pictures. I was also told that people that go to these camps, they get their phones taken away. Whether that's true or not, I can't verify that yet. I need more proof on that. Uh, let's go here. So the George R. Brown Convention Center, the Windsor Village United Methodist Church, Key Middle School, M.O. Campbell Education Center, West End Multi-Service Center, the Islamic Center on 17-250 Coventry Park Drive, also 8830 Old Galveston Road in Houston. So you can see here, this is a list in Houston, and then here's Conroe, Cypress, League City, and other locations. Now, what about this article? Well, hold on, hold on. This is actually, this is a list of hotels and motels where people that are affected can contact FEMA, supposedly. This is a list of hotels that are accepted, I guess. So take a look at this. I'll leave the link in the video description box. You can see there's plenty of them. This is a map that shows a few of the locations that I pulled up on Google Maps just to give people an idea. Now, here's the thing. For those out there that believe that guy that said there's the Russian winds, homeless shelter, caught killing people, and the Salvation Army, and when people were giving me a hard time and I said the guy just most likely has schizophrenia, and he, I really doubt he was a police officer at any time. He might have been. I doubt it. I've just seen so many people that are similar to him that are absolutely crazy and it's not their fault necessarily it is what it is i mean and just because they're crazy doesn't mean some of the stuff that they say isn't true you just have to take it with a grain of salt now i can't find any information about a russian winds homeless shelter not in houston or anywhere else i can't find anything about the russian winds homeless shelter so where is it now the salvation army and certain homeless shelters could they be connected to a network that might look for certain organs or certain blood types or or certain people to be a part of specific experiments like black budget experiments there could be and if i was homeless i don't think i would want to go to a homeless shelter either for a, a multitude of reasons but i am still not convinced on what that guy said by any means and I think that there's plenty of times when the Salvation Army and other homeless shelters will help people out without selling them to some black budget program. <laughs> now, with that said, think about all the stuff that's happened in the past where there's been experiments done on what some would refer to as the less, lesser desirables because of their financial situation, which is unfortunate. Where do they go? What happens when you read articles about how homeless shelters don't fill up and homeless people disappear from the streets like in crazy high numbers check this out right here i'm going to share this with you 
Houston, Texas reduces homelessness by 50% in four years. 50% in four years? Wow. Are jobs that good in Houston? Are jobs that good? Do they have that many government programs to get people off the streets now? I mean, 50% in four years, that's a pretty big number, isn't it? Where are they going? The city aims to end all chronic homelessness by the end of 2015. Well, we have truly gone from managing homelessness to ending homelessness, said Marilyn Brown, CEO of the Coalition for the Homeless of Houston, Harris County, in a statement. We are just getting our second wind. Wow. Now, this is where it gets interesting. Remember that guy that was interviewed that said he was an ex-cop that was homeless? He said, the Salvation Army? And the Russian wins homeless shelter was caught killing everybody. I can't find anything about Russian wins, but what I did find is this interesting article that says homelessness has dropped by 50% and we are just getting our second wind. So very interesting. You know, it's like sometimes the mind picks up on stuff and you'll say something that somebody's thinking, and they'll be like, how did you just say that? And you're like, well, I was just thinking about it. Like, that's what I was thinking about. Sometimes people's minds pick up on stuff that's out there, and they'll say things oftentimes in code also, maybe not even fully realizing what they're doing, especially others around them, when in fact they're picking up on like Akashic records and, and relaying little bits and pieces of information. So let's, let's talk about some possibilities with this for a minute. Let's say that there is a dark institution or there's a mafia that's connected to certain homeless shelters it's like okay we're going to give you x amount of dollars all you got to look for is somebody with these requirements and they don't ask any questions like okay sure no problem you know so that way the less they know the less they have to worry about answering down in the future so they just kind of you know keep their mouth shut don't you know look the other way whenever something comes in that meets those requirements okay there you go now they could be doing it under the table they could have contracts i mean who really knows but what do you do to cut down on homeless population in a city of 2.3 million people by 50% in just, a, in just a few years? You, know, you find out, at least from articles here, that countries like China are a part, uh, you know, they, certain people in certain parts of China and the government, etc., will take organs from prisoners and sell them to the highest bidder. I mean, could they be doing that here? Somebody left a comment, if you're homeless, who would even know if something like that happened? Well, there's plenty of homeless people that their family still keeps in conne uh, connection with them. But there's also, I would say probably, and I haven't done the research on this, a lot of homeless people that don't have family anymore, that don't have the connections that people that are in an everyday community or, you know, work in the 9 to 5, 9 to 9, grindstone, whatever. It's very interesting to think about. So what do you guys think? when stuff like that comes out. Now, I'm, I'm going to say again, I think that guy was schizophren is schizophrenic. I don't think he used to be a police officer. I think he was taking information that he had maybe heard on the streets. Maybe he saw something. Maybe I'm wrong. This is my opinion. But if you watch that guy multiple times, you can tell he's freaked out. But if you've ever met somebody that's homeless, that's schizophrenic, I've met plenty of them, plenty of them, they're very similar to that guy. Now, once again, that doesn't mean he was wrong. What would be the best pickings for dark factions that want to do experiments that aren't allowed under you know, certain, certain protocol? I mean, there's, there's plenty of information and evidence to show that not only U.S. citizens, but people from around the world have been guinea pigs, a part of government experiments, military programs, etc., without even knowing about it. And in national security, in the state of national security, they feel that they're above the law, they can do whatever it takes because it's labeled as national security. There you go. Uh, leave it at that. Question everything. Be excellent to each other. Make sure to subscribe to youtube.com slash Clyde Nesson Time Lord. If you haven't already, just hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, hit the share button. And if you go to leakproject.com, you'll get access to exclusive content only available for premium members. And one other thing that I wanted to add, I was looking for this. I've got this really good stuff called Formula 13 by getthetea.com. It has no caffeine. It's organic. It's non-GMO. And it's amazing. 
for me personally, for energy and clarity of thought. I love this stuff. I mean, this is as good as coffee. So check it out. Get the tea.com. When you check out, they're going to say, how did you hear about us? If you let them know I sent you Leak Project, then they'll know. And that helps Leak Project also. And you'll thank me later. Be the change you want to see. Shapeshifters.